Senator Barrasso, thank you for uh, allowing me to testify to your committee last December, and thank you for joining us here today. We look forward to your comments. Well, thank you so much, and thanks for your wonderful testimony. I, you know, that's what we tried to do in terms of kicking off infrastructure with that hearing as we got ready to go into a new Congress. But it's a privilege to be with all of you uh, today. Thank you for the opportunity. I um, want to thank the executive director as well as uh, President uh, Braceros for, for inviting me. Look, as chairman of the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee, you know, I get the privilege of working side by side with all of you. And as you said, I'm a doctor, and people know me as a doctor in Wyoming. It's a fascinating thing. And you say, well, how do you chair this committee? But in the Wyoming State Senate, I chaired the Transportation Committee for five, uh, my five years in the, in the State Senate. So uh, worked closely, and other members of the Senate, Deb Fisher from Nebraska was chairman of the Transportation Committee in the Nebraska legislature. So we know the issues. We know the issues of rural communities. We know what needs uh, are out there. And this is a committee now that has jurisdiction over some of America's most important infrastructure, including our highways, our roads, our bridges, our dams, our water systems, and our ports. And as you know, first, as you all know firsthand, the infrastructure is critical to our economy, our productivity, and to our country's success. You know, 2018 was a very successful year for moving infrastructure legislation forward. The committee was able to pass uh, into law America's Water Infrastructure Act, the most significant water infrastructure bill passed in decades. Uh, this comprehensive bipartisan legislation passed the Senate 99 to 1, which is why it made no press. <laughs> You know, if there is not a fight, they don't want to cover it. You know, it's, it is fascinating the way it goes. Um, the, uh, we, you know, uh, Tom Carper, who's going to be here a, t a little later today, the ranking member of this committee, he and I were there in the Oval Office, Republicans and Democrats. Uh, president signed it into law. The press came in. They asked a lot of questions unrelated to infrastructure. They reported nothing on infrastructure. And the whole story from the, from the, from the signing of the bill was about a caravan coming up through Mexico. The whole thing. So we're trying to do good work in a bipartisan way. It doesn't always get uh, captured and presented uh, to the public. Uh, but this is going to benefit Americans for years to come. Uh, we also passed legislation to reauthorize and enhance the Environmental Protection Agency's Brownfields program, uh, which helps clean up contaminated uh, sites, which can be then reused. So I think cleaning up these areas makes a very important uh, job in terms of spare, uh, spurring needed infrastructure work. Uh, in that area. You know, outside of our committee, Congress also passed the Federal Aviation Administration Reauthorization Act of 2018, multi-year, which, you know, we've done all these little extensions, little extensions. I think this was the longest renewal um, since the 80s. So this is, we're trying to now expand this bipartisan work that we've done on infrastructure, uh, on water, on aviation, to America's roads and bridges. And that's where we are uh, starting with your testimony as you kicked it off uh, last, uh, last year. The transportation infrastructure drives the health of the economy and the prosperity of the nation. We depend on our highways, on our roads, on our bridges to move people, to move goods, uh, to get to our jobs, uh, to visit with our loved ones, and so surface transportation infrastructure connects all of us. Congress needs to commit to funding the needed infrastructure highway projects so that we can keep pace with the demand, and the demand is out there. We also must remove burdensome federal regulations that slow efforts to invest the money efficiently. The uh, authorization of the federal highway funding will expire, as you know, in September of next year, 2020. Congressional Budget Office is projecting the Highway Trust Fund will become insolvent sometime in 2021. The time has come to make significant investments in our roads and bridges and to keep the Highway Trust Fund solvent. That's why our committee has already begun the process to deliver highway infrastructure legislation on time. We kicked off the process with a hearing to gather stakeholder input. Um, you were kind enough to participate as a wet witness, offered key insights of your experience at Utah's Department of Transportation as the director there and AASHTO's policy recommendations. In January, we held a hearing to consider the nomination of Nicole Nason to be the administrator of the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, one week later, the committee advanced her nomination. 
Federal Highway Administration is going to need a strong leader, and she is, a strong leader to work with Congress on the development and implementation of highways infrastructure legislation. Uh, Nicole is the right person for the job, and I look forward to the Senate confirming her nomination quickly. Uh, earlier this month, Ranking uh, Member Carper and I asked the members of our committee for their specific priorities for the Surface Transportation Bill. Uh, those requests are due back uh, in, a, in a week or so, and we will then make the same request to the rest of the Senate. So as this bipartisan process continues, there are three core principles that I believe must be withheld, must be upheld. First, the legislation must address the needs of rural America as well as urban America. Rural roads are vital to bringing raw materials and products from the heartland to the coast. We all buy and we use goods that are transported on our nation's highways through rural states and communities. And if you look at the makeup of the Environment and Public Works Committee, rural America is very well represented. The uh, federal highways like I-80 run coast to coast, bringing goods and services across America. They include the stretch of I-80 that runs through my home state of Wyoming, Deb Fisher's home state in Nebraska, that we, as we've talked about chairing the committee, so we must maintain and improve the highways that crisscross our rural states to keep vital arteries of national commerce open. Second, we need to maintain the federal highway program's current approach of distributing funds to states by formula. This approach speeds up the delivery of urgently needed federal support and provides flexibility for both urban and rural communities to address their needs. What works in Chicago may not work for smaller communities like Cody, Wyoming. Reliable formula funding also promotes long-term planning, which is the best way to ensure that products, the projects are built, as we've talked about in that hearing, better and faster and cheaper and smarter. Third, when we make significant investments in our nation's infrastructure, we also need to be sure that this money is being used as effectively and efficiently as possible. Those are two words you don't often hear from federal government, efficient and effective. But part of the way we can do this is by cutting Washington's red tape so that road and bridge improvement projects can happen faster. As states and towns wait to get permits and approvals from Washington, precious time is wasted and costs and projects rise. I saw that in, in Wyoming. Um, it shouldn't take years to get permits for projects, and we had one that took over a dozen years to get permits for projects that, that for the purpose of safety, that then take months only to complete, or less than a year to complete. You've got a 10 to 1 ratio of permits to construction. So we need to speed up project delivery, and I believe it can be done without sacrificing environmental safeguards. Next week, uh, the, our committee is going to be holding a hearing on the economic benefits of investing in highway infrastructure and getting needed projects done quicker. It will be an important step as we continue this process. Look, infrastructure isn't a Democrat issue. It's not a Republican issue. It's an American issue. And this needs to be bipartisan and bicameral. Uh, you are all going to play a key role. Uh, you are our eyes and ears on the ground. You are our partners in making sure we can put together a plan that works for your specific state. And I just want to thank you all as members of ASHTO for the important work that you do. Your partnership will be key as we move forward in the process. Uh, together, I believe that we can work to improve our nation's infrastructure and do it in a way that works for all Americans. I just want to thank you for allowing me to be with you this morning. Thank you very much.